Today we are going to discuss the cardiac output curves or cardiac function curves. We have basically started our new chapter about the cardiac output venous return and their regulation and we have discussed a few topics about the cardiac output. We have discussed that cardiac output is basically the amount of blood that the heart pumps every minute and venous return is basically the amount of blood that returns to the heart every minute. We have discussed the the effect of age on the cardiac output that cardiac output initially increases with age and then it decreases with age. And similarly we have discussed the Frank Larle, uh, Frank Starling mechanism or the Frank Starling law which basically states that the cardiac output is basically dependent upon the venous return or the card or the heart will pump whatever amount of blood is being returned to the heart. Now the Frank Starling law has some uh, limitations because the heart can pump whatever amount of blood returns through the venous return but there is a ceiling point uh, after which there is a plateau. Now in the cardiac function curves or the cardiac output curves we are going to focus on that point or or the limitation of the heart. Similarly with the help of these graphs we are also going to discuss the effect of the the effect of different different kinds of stimulation or the effect of hypertrophy and different diseases on the cardiac output now first of all we are going to take the normal cardiac output or the normal cardiac function curve this green color curve is basically the cardiac the normal cardiac output or the normal cardiac function curve. If we look at this curve, we see that on uh, in this graph, we see that on the y axis, we have plotted the cardiac output that is liters per minute. And on the x axis, we have uh, plotted the right atrial pressure, which is in the millimeter of mercury. Basically, the right atrial pressure uh, increases or decreases and it changes basically with the amount of blood that returns to the heart or it is very much dependent upon the venous return. It is also dependent on a lot of other factors but one contributing factor is the venous return. Now normally in the very in the normal heart if we see when the right atrial pressure when the right atrial pressure is zero when the right atrial pressure is zero and we plot this and we plot this zero with the cardiac output these two curves will meet at this point these two curves will meet at this point so with the normal right atrial pressure with the normal right atrial pressure the cardiac output is normal and it is around 5 liters per minute and this cardiac output this cardiac output starts increasing when the right atrial pressure increasing it starts increasing due to the increasing venous return or the amount of blood or the volume of blood that is returning to the heart is this is a completely normal heart so in a normal heart with the increasing right atrial pressure the maximum cardiac output that the a normal heart normal means without any disease or without any stimulation in a normal heart with the increasing right atrial pressure the cardiac output the cardiac output or the cardiac output can increase from this point up to this point which is around 13 which is around 13 liters per minute so it simply means that if we start increasing the venous return or the amount of blood that is being returned to the heart increases the cardiac output can increase as much 
is 13 liters per minute from the normal 5 liters per minute and that is around 2.5 times of the normal 2.5 times of the normal cardiac output so in a normal heart with the increasing venous return or with the increasing right atrial pressure the cardiac output can increase up to 13 liters per minute or it can increase more than double or around 2.5 times of the normal cardiac output with the normal right atrial pressure now this now this graph is also showing some other uh, some other parameters or some other variables which can also influence the cardiac output now some of the some of the parameters or some of the stimulants they can increase the effectiveness of the heart and some of the diseases or the pathologies they can basically decrease the cardiac output or they can decrease the pumping effect of the heart now if we consider the the factors or the parameters or all the stimulations which will increase which will increase the cardiac output more than the normal cardiac output they include the nervous stimulation and the hypertrophy of the heart if a heart is being stimulated with the sympathetic nerves depending upon the level of stimulation with mild moderate or intense stimulation the cardiac output can increase from this 13 liter per minute to 15 or 20 or 25 or even more than that per minute 15 liters per minute or 20 liters per minute depending upon the stimulation of the heart because the heart is being stimulated by the sympathetic nerve and the parasympathetic nerves the basically the sympathetic nerves increase the heart rate and the parasympathetic stimulation decreases the heart rate so if the sympathetic nerves get stimulated slightly the cardiac output can increase the cardiac output can increase at the same level of right atrial pressure it can increase it more than the normal this is basically this this plateau is for the normal cardiac output but this one is for the slight or the mild stimulation of the heart this one is for moderate stimulation of the heart with the help of sympathetic nerves and this is for extreme stimulation of the heart now not only sympathetic stimulation will increase the cardiac output but inhibition of the parasympathetic nerves basically the parasympathetic nerves decrease the heart rate and the pumping effectiveness of the heart so when the parasympathetic nerves are inhibited the the stimulation or the heart rate increases and the cardiac output increases with at every level it will increase at every level even if the right atrial pressure is zero even if there is no increase in the right atrial pressure it is at this level even at this zero level the 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 cardiac output will touch this point because even at zero level if there is stimulation some kind of stimulation small mild moderate stimulation this the effectiveness of the heart will increase and it is basically considered as hyper effective heart it is a hyper effective heart now one important factor is in the hyper effective heart is the nervous stimulation and the nervous stimulation basically includes the sympathetics and the parasympathetics the sympath sympathetic system must act be activated and the parasympathetic must be inhibited only then the cardiac output will increase now another factor which will increase the effectiveness of the heart or which will increase the cardiac output is the hypertrophy it is the hypertrophy of the heart the hypertrophy of the heart is basically the increase in the muscle mass of the heart and it occurs in athletes or the people who exercise regularly now 
when the uh, when the heart muscles increase the muscle mass of the heart increase that muscle that heart can pump more forcefully so when it contracts it can it can pump more blood it can pump more blood and due to the hypertrophy of the heart the effectiveness of the heart, the the heart or the pumping of the heart at every level of the right atrial pressure will increase now if the hypertrophy and the stimulation of the heart is combined if a heart is hypertrophied and at the same time there is nervous stimulation it is there is sympathetic stimulation and inhibition of the parasympathetic nerves the cardiac output can even increase more than this level it can even increase more than this level it can even increase up to 30 liters per minute 30 liters per minute the normal cardiac output is 5 liters per minute if the heart is absolutely normal there is no nervous stimulation there is no hypertrophy and there is no increase in the right atrial pressure the heart will be pumping 5 liters per minute now in the normal heart if only right atrial pressure increases there will be increase in the cardiac output up to this level and then even if there is increase there will be no increase from this point onward or there will be around 2.5 times increase in the cardiac output that increase will be only due to the increase in right atrial pressure or increase in the venous return but if at the same time there is stimulation of the heart with the help of sympathetic nerves and inhibition of the parasympathetic nerves and there is hypertrophy of the heart then depending upon the level of stimulation mild moderate intense and there uh, similarly small hypertrophy more hypertrophy or if there is combined stimulation depending upon the level it can increase the cardiac output from 5 liters up to 25 or 30 liters per minute now this increase this increase may be even at the zero right atrial pressure it may be even at zero right atrial pressure for example the heart has been stimulated there will be no increase in the right atrial pressure but the cardiac output will have touched this level at zero point the normal heart was pumping 5 liters at the zero right atrial pressure but the hyper effective heart which is due to the nervous stimulation and which is due to the hypertrophy it can pump a large amount of blood or the cardiac output can increase very much even at even without a change in the right atrial pressure then with the increase in the right atrial pressure there can be a further increase in the a uh, cardiac output as we discussed in the frank starling law but there is a limit this plateau this plateau is showing a limitation in the start when the right atrial pressure starts increasing the cardiac output also starts increasing but a level is reached when there is a plateau formation and more increase in the right atrial pressure will not increase the cardiac output any more now the nervous stimulation and hypertrophy makes the heart hyper effective there are some factors which basically makes the heart hypo effective it makes the heart hypo effective for example the coronary artery blockage the blood vessels that supplies nutrients to the heart if they gets blocked or inhibition of the nervous excitation if the sympathetic systems are inhibited if the excitation of the heart is blocked or there is or the valves of the heart are not functioning properly there there is a valvular heart disease or there are congenital problems in the heart or the rate or rhythm of the heart is abnormal if the rate or the rhythm of the heart is abnormal these factors can make the heart hypo effective it means that even at the zero right atrial pressure even at the zero right atrial pressure the cardiac output will be less than 5 it will be somewhere around this point or this point or even this point so the, the cardiac output will decrease with the hypo effective heart and these there then there are more levels in the hypo effective heart depending upon the level of 
blockage in the coronaries or they are depending upon the level of inhibition of the nervous excitation or depending upon the level of valvular heart disease there can be hypo effectiveness or decreased effectiveness or decreased cardiac output of the heart and the cardiac output will be below the normal level at all levels of the right atrial pressure at all levels of the right atrial pressure so if in a normal heart there is increase in the right atrial pressure the cardiac output will increase to this point or 13 liters per minute but in a hypo effective heart the the cardiac output will be either at this level or this level or this level like 2 liters or 5 liters or less than that even with the increase in right atrial pressure even with the increase in right atrial pressure and at the same time if the heart is hyper effective then you, then at that level the, the the heart will be pumping more than normal blood it will be pumping more the cardiac output will be somewhere here or here or here anywhere but in the hypo effective heart the 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 increase or even in the normal heart the the cardiac output will be either at this point in the zero level or it may be at this point rather than this normal point or it may be at this point rather than this normal point so these are basically the cardiac output curves or the cardiac function curves basically which shows the increase in the cardiac output up to a certain limit and then there is a plateau when the plateau comes there is no more increase in the cardiac output even with the increase in right atrial pressure and if there are some stimulants or there is some inhibition then that will make the cardiac output more or less if this, if the heart is hyper effective due to stimulation or hypertrophy then the cardiac output will be more than normal it will be more than normal but if the card heart is hypo effective due to some blockage or nervous inhibition of nervous excitation or valvular or congenital heart disease then the cardiac output will be below the normal levels depending upon the level of disease the cardiac output will decrease Uh, accordingly so that's all about the cardiac output curves or the cardiac function curves thanks a lot for watching the video